All right, I have to talk about this Coyote versus Acme thing because this is just very interesting to me as a Looney Tunes fan. I've been kind of straying away from talking about industry news, mainly because it's not really my thing and also because a lot of times it's filled with a lot of rumors and hearsay and reports. With this situation, I feel like a lot of concrete stuff is coming out and I do love the Looney Tunes and I want to see this movie get seen because it's been a very interesting roller coaster of a ride of emotions for someone who loves Roadrunner and Wally Coyote like myself. So a few years ago, Warner Brothers announced that they were going to be making a live action animation hybrid movie called Coyote vs. Acme. It supposedly is loosely inspired after a humorous New Yorker article that was written. The premise of this movie is that Wally Coyote, after years of using Acme products to try to catch the Roadrunner and they never worked for him, he finally decides to sue the Acme Corporation and in this movie he was going to team up with a lawyer who hasn't been able to win cases and they were going to be the underdogs going up against the giant corporation Acme. How ironic for this situation. <laughs> of course, I was super excited for this. Look, I love the Space Jam movies, okay? But I am also a big fan of Looney Tunes back in action. That movie is underrated. If you haven't seen it, you need to see it. It stars Brendan Fraser. The director of Gremlins did it. But I've always said that Looney Tunes, probably more than some other characters out there, perfectly blend in with the live action world well because they're entertainers. It doesn't feel like the Smurfs or Alvin the Chipmunks. It feels legit. Very Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Wile E. Coyote going up against Acme feels like classic Looney Tunes. Tunes, that feels legit. Hell, they even did this premise already. There's an episode of Tiny Toon Adventures where there's like a segment where Calamity Coyote tried to sue Acme for their faulty products. If Tiny Toons can do it, I think Looney Tunes can do it. Leave that poor bird alone. <laughs> And I personally just love Roadrunner and Wally Coyote. It's a very simple premise. I think it's always funny to see every single thing he gets from Acme fail. Roadrunner just always getting away. So when I heard that they were gonna make a whole movie after Wally Coyote, I was like, yes, do that. Plus, this movie is gonna have. I'm a no, no. So this seemed like a surefire win. This is coming out. But where was it gonna come out? Because even though this sounded like there's gonna be a theatrical release, eventually we did get HBO Max. There was always this thing of like, was well, it gonna come out theatrically or is it gonna come out on HBO Max as a Max original? But then when the Warner Brothers Discovery Zazlav regime came in and there were a lot of talks about not putting out movies directly to streaming, that they were gonna focus more on theatrical releases. When Warner Brothers put out their theatrical slate, they had Coyote vs. Acme on that slate. They actually even had a date for it. It was supposed to come out in July of 2023. But then post pandemic, of course, a lot of movies Studios shifted their release schedules, Coyote vs. Acme was taken off the schedule and replaced with this little indie film called Barbe? Barbie? You might have heard of it, I'm sure it did okay. But it was always assumed that it would either come back on the schedule or at the very least it would be dropped on HBO Max. And then we just found out recently that they were shoving the movie, even though the movie is pretty much complete, even though they spent 70 million some dollars on making it, they were going to shelve the entire movie so they can get a tax write-off. That's why they call it show business, not show art, kid. And what's wild about this is if you've been following Warner Brothers, you know this ain't the first time they've done it. The most popular example before this was Batgirl. They were supposed to come out with a Batgirl movie. It was originally intended to be an HBO Max original. They even have Michael Keaton's Batman in it. Brendan Fraser was also gonna be in that. It was pretty much done, ready to go. But then they were like, oh, you know, DC's changing and this doesn't feel like it's theatrical enough. We're gonna shelf it. There was a lot of backlash on that and properly so, but the idea would leave that we were thinking at the time was, well, you know, they're gonna redo DC a little bit. So I guess maybe it doesn't fit. But then they started doing this with other stuff like Scoob Holiday Haunt was supposed to be this Scooby-Doo animated movie using the kids from Scoob, which was the best part of Scoob. That got shelved, you know, it was pretty much complete. There's a Batman Christmas special, Merry Little Batman, and a Batman animated series, Cape Crusader, that they were originally gonna put out that they're not putting out, but then they sold them over to Prime. There's an Urkel holiday special that was made that I don't even know where that is now. Does Jaleel White have a copy, at least? I need to see that. Prime Video, can you buy that too? You already got Principal Winslow in <laughs> Invincible, just get Urkel, you created the Family Matters universe. <laughs> Needless to say, this was starting to become a pattern at Warner Brothers of if they didn't want to release certain things, they could just shelve it, get a tax write off, but all the people that worked on that are now having a project that never sees the light of day. So many people that worked on this film just started dropping stuff, images from the set, concept art. There's like a clip online of a chorus singing classic operatic tunes but saying meep meep like the roadrunner does. Meep 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 It's beautiful. You gotta check it out. I don't want to put it in this video because I don't know how much of it is actually like leaked stuff and I ain't trying to get my stuff copyright claim. So I ain't gonna touch it. 
But you know, do some cowardly versus Acme hashtag searches. You'll find some stuff out there. I'm just saying. Apparently this movie was so done, they had already screened it for test audiences and get this, positive feedback, higher marks than they were expecting. It seemed like it was a good movie to put out. And yes, $70 million is a big budget, but compared to some of the 200, $300 million superhero films we've been getting, it ain't that big. But that's the thing, that's the gamble. Tax write-off, I guess, was guaranteed. But something about this one, got people upset. And I'm not just talking about the general public upset. We get upset at everything all the time. That's just how the internet works. But I'm talking about the industry itself got Yes, this is all hearsay stuff, but according to some of the articles, there's also been reports that actors and directors canceled meetings with Warner Brothers. As a result of this, people are gonna start to worry, if I make a movie with you or make a TV show with you, even if it's done, there is the possibility that you will not release it. And not only not release it, because let's be real, this is a thing that has happened before. There are definitely movies and TV shows throughout years that have been made that have never seen the light of day. But I think it's more the idea of at any time, some executive can decide, let's not release it, just so we can get a tax break, not because we think it's bad or we think it's gonna mess up the IP or nothing like that, just because we wanna save some money. I think that's what becomes a concern. So of course, that's gonna make people a little more hesitant to wanna work with you if they have a feeling that they're gonna be the next project that's gonna happen to. Think about the DC universe, for example. James Gunn has been hired to kind of do a reset to that universe. Is that gonna be a situation where if one of the DC movies doesn't do as well as expected, they're just gonna stop the whole thing and start all over again or make a DC movie and be like, well, these other movies didn't make a lot of money, so we're gonna just shelve this random one? Like, you don't wanna think that those things could happen, but given this track record, it's a possibility that those things could happen or at least be assumed that it could happen. You don't want that assumption. Now the latest reports that they're reversing course, Warner Brothers actually pulled a Sonic and was like, you know what, we was playing. Get that thing off a shelf. We don't even know how this thing even got on a shelf. We gonna release it, what are you talking about? I mean, we gonna get somebody else to pay for it to release it, but it's coming out. They are gonna release it, but they're looking for someone else to be the main distributor of it. So they're looking at Prime Video, Apple, Netflix. Wouldn't it be hilarious if Disney rolled up gave Warner Brothers some money, said, we're gonna release Coyote vs. Acme ourselves <laughs> and put that on Disney Plus. And you literally are watching a Looney Tunes movie, but with the Disney logo in front of it. And you know if Disney bought it, it'd be like, well, we gonna make some changes up in here. And you know they would throw some Disney characters up in there. Donald Duck will be in that thing next to Daffy immediately. <laughs> I kind of want this to happen. <laughs> Why did Coyote versus Acme of all things was the one? Well, I think the timing had a lot to do with it. This report started coming out less than 24 hours after the SAG after strike ended. The writers, the actors striking against Hollywood. And one of the first things you want to do as a corporation that you were already having fights with, one of the things y'all worked on, we just gonna shell. I'm not saying that people would have been upset at any time that this happened, but I just feel like having it happen right at that moment was probably what made people go like, what? Warner Brothers has also been doing some weird things with animation in general. They've been pulling animated stuff off of HBO Max slash Max. So even though this is a live action animated hybrid, it felt more the same. Feel like that for the animation industry, it felt very painful because the animation industry, if you think about it, has really helped us out a lot in the last few years. In 2020, they were pretty much one of the only things that could still keep going because people could animate, write, and do voice acting from home. So we were still making animated stuff when everything else was shut down. But then once everything came back, it was like Cartoon 2. We all know them. Not as much so, but same thing kind of happened during the strike because television animation wasn't under the same contract that the SAG-AFTRA and WGA were fighting against the studios for. So it was still possible to work on and promote television animation, most of it, during the strike. So when it comes to animators, writers, voice actors in that world, I feel like there's a little bit of like resentment going on of like, you always keep calling us when no one else can do stuff. But then the moment everyone else comes back, you act like you don't know us. And I feel like having this happen right after that is like, mm-mm, mm-mm, we ain't playing no more. But with all that being said, I think there is another thing about this that I wish, I hope, that Warner Brothers or anyone else understands. People freaking love the Looney Tunes. Why is that so hard to understand? We just love the Looney Tunes and we love their association with Warner Brothers. Bugs Bunny and the gang are essential to Warner Brothers just as much as Mickey Mouse and friends are essential to Disney. I grew up hardcore on the Looney Tunes. They were everywhere when I was growing up. They were on cable television. I were VHS tapes, DVDs. They always were so funny to me. They are a pure inspiration of a lot of my personal 
personal humor. Looney Tunes have been around since freaking the 30s, dude. Like they have been so essential to animation, to comedy, and to Warner Brothers. And what's great about them is it's so versatile. I mean, think about just in the past few years, you have turned the Looney Tunes into classic cartoon characters, basketball superstars, sitcom with the Looney Tunes show. You even made them superheroes at one point. Don't think we forgot about Looney Tunes Unleashed. I'm not gonna be all mean on Warner Brothers because sometimes they do it right. You got new cartoons that look like old cartoons. We had all this 100 years of Warner Brothers where we got to show off how the Looney Tunes have been crossed over into Superman and DC Scooby-Doo, Harry Potter. They even did some animated shorts for Cartoon Network where they show the Looney Tunes as these different types of characters. So I thought that was really cool. Why this could take a while. Tiny Toons University, that's actually a pretty decent show, and that's also got the Looney Tunes characters in it. Teen Titans Go! WB100 Anniversary Special. The Looney Tunes were great in that, as well as Gremlins. I appreciate that you also gave some Gremlins some love in that. Also, I appreciate that you actually released Gremlins Secrets of the Mogwai, because I was a little nervous <laughs> that that wasn't going to come out, but it did, and it was awesome. I might have to talk about that in a future video, because that series is bangers, man. Bangers! I personally love Wile E. Coyote so freaking much. And I think this is such a great idea for a movie. And I don't even know if the movie's gonna be good. I haven't seen a single frame of it, but hell, you talking to a dude that watched the Tom and Jerry movie that just came out. Hell, you talking to a dude that watched the Tom and Jerry movie from back in the day. And I will definitely give this one a chance. So I wanna see it and I hope it comes out. I hope someone buys it. It might just be a straight to home digital release. That's fine. I'll accept anything over nothing. I would have personally loved to see another Louis Tunes movie on the big screen that wasn't a Space Jam. But if this ends up on Prime Video or Apple or Netflix or Disney Plus, I'm telling you, man, Disney, you should do it. I know I have ranted about this for long enough. Ah! But yeah, man, I just love, love, love the Looney Tunes. And I just felt so bad when I heard that this was going to happen. I was so upset. And so I'm so glad that there's a possibility that this might be saved, that this might come back. But I really hope that this is a lesson learned that we love the Looney Tunes and that you should be using them even more than you probably are if you can. Please. Give me all the Looney Tunes stuff. That, 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 that should not be all, folks. And maybe there's hope for Batgirl yet, or Scoob Holiday Haunt, or the Urkel animated Christmas special. How could you make something like that and not release it? Jaleel White has not played Urkel in years, except for that one episode of Scooby-Doo and guess who? Please put it out, man. Do the Urkel. I don't think I'm gonna get many people to sign that change.org petition, but good job for Coyote versus Acme.